Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to Faith Lutheran Church's online service for this second Sunday of the Easter season. We wish God's blessings to you wherever you are watching this and attending this service with us as we follow the order of Matins with the service insert that should have been emailed to our members last night. It is also available for you on faithalaska.com if you would like to download your own copy for use at home. As we go through this time of physical distancing, many of us are recognizing the hardships and the shadows of the world around us. But as we celebrate the resurrection of our, of our Lord, we recognize that in Christ, we can emerge from the shadows and today, we see how in Christ we emerge from the shadow of rebellion. We wish, uh, again, that the Lord would bless you as you worship in Christ's name this morning. Let us begin by singing our opening hymn. This morning we use the hymn 163. <laughs>
We begin with our opening liturgy. O oh Lord, open my lips. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us conf confess our sins to God our Father. Merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the, For the sake, sake of, of your, your Son, Son Jesus, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. God Almighty, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord is risen. Let us worship Him. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with disciples and took away their fears with your word of peace. Come to us also by your word and sacrament. Banish our fears with the comforting assurance of your abiding presence, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Today's first lesson is recorded for us in the prophet Jonah, chapter 1. This lesson will also serve as the, as the basis of Pastor Chris's message to us this morning. A reading from Jonah, chapter 1. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. 
This is the word of the Lord. We join now in singing the psalm of the day, Psalm 16. The second lesson for today is from Peter's first letter, 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 3. Peter reminds us that in the glorious resurrection of our Lord, we have true hope and security, even among the great trials and shadows of this world that we face today. A reading from 1 Peter chapter 1. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel of our Lord for this second Sunday of Easter is recorded for us in John chapter 20. Our Lord appears to his disciples and gives him the peace in knowing that he is risen, he is risen indeed. And we are blessed 
for believing in that resurrection, even though we have not seen the Lord with our eyes. The Gospel of our Lord from John chapter 20. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of our Lord. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Alleluia. We continue with the hymn of the day, hymn 143, the first three stanzas.
Good morning to my faith family. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. What a blessing it is to be together with you this morning as we study God's word and learn more about Jonah, an amazing prophet. And as we spend time in God's word this morning, I invite you all to open up your bulletin insert to page five. There's some notes there that I think you'll find helpful for our sermon time this morning. Also a place for you to make some notes on a map that we'll, you'll find important as we take a look at who Jonah is and what God, God commanded him to do today. There's no word in the English language that is more popular or unpopular than the simple word no. It might be the most popular word in the English language because we say it all the time. How often do you find yourself running around your house telling your kids that one two-letter word? No. How many times during this time of quarantine have you heard the government officials tell you, no, you can't do that? It's such a popular word. We use it all the time. And if you're honest, you also have to admit, it's the most unpopular word there is. None of us, none of us like to hear the word no. There are certain educators out there in the world today that say you should never, ever use the word no. Well, why not? It might damage someone's self-esteem. Really? Well, here's the problem. If we ever say the word no, you're making somebody out to be a rebel. And you don't want to be a rebel. We don't like that word no. When the government tells us you can't come within six feet of someone else who's not related to you. We don't like that word no. When our governor tells us you can't invite anyone, family or friend, someone who's not a member of your household, into your own home. We don't like that word no when our legislation tells us you can't go to a different community right now. No, no, no. We don't like it. And we like it even less when our God says no. We don't like the thought that we might be rebels. And while this time of quarantine might cast a shadow on the idea of what we can and what we cannot do, God's word is crystal clear. Today we follow one of his servants in the Bible, a man by the name of Jonah, as he teaches us what it truly means to be a rebel as we look to the Lord our God, as the Lord who teaches us to be followers of Jesus Christ. Let's dive in this morning to the book of Jonah and get to know our God better today as we see his love for us and how he helps us emerge from the shadows of rebellion to live as his dear loved children. You've certainly heard of the book of Jonah before. It's one of the most famous stories in all of Scripture. But I wonder if you've ever stopped to think a little bit more about who this Jonah guy is and really who are the main characters in the story. Jonah starts out, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. We just heard both of the characters in the story. The protagonist, the Lord, and the antagonist, Jonah. Other than the Lord, Jonah, and Amittai, no one is specifically named in this entire book. The Lord gives us his covenant name to start out. You remember that name? It's the name that he proclaimed to Moses in the burning bush. It's a name that shows that he is being, he is life in and of itself. It's a name that he used to sign and seal his covenant to his people when he wanted them to remember who he the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness. You know that, Lord. 
You love that, Lord. The best protagonist that we'll ever see in the history of time. Then we meet up with Jonah. Jonah's name is an innocent one. It means dove. And we hear that he was the son of a man whose name is Amittai. Hebrew has a special way of showing what a name means. Amittai means faithfulness. While that family name was certainly one of renown, it's ironic, isn't it? That right here, as God introduces the characters in the book, we see the Lord, the God of free and faithful grace, who promises to be faithful to his people now and always, and Jonah, this faithful son an innocent man. And yet, as we see the book progress, we see that Jonah is anything but that. What he is, is a rebel. Someone who goes against the very words that God himself declares. The book starts out with a bang in showing us what happens next in the life of Jonah. The Lord says, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. God's instructions to Jonah are specific. Literally, he says, arise, go. I need you to go to Nineveh. The word Nineveh might not jump off the page for you when you read it, the first time. Nineveh was not a great place to call home unless you were a Ninevite. And even then, there were perils lurking around every corner. The Ninevites were a bloodthirsty people. That's why God calls them out and says, their wickedness has come up to the highest heavens. I've seen their monstrosities. And Jonah, I need you to go preach to them. God calls it a great city. Not just because it was a large city, but because it was an important one at the world, in the world at that time. A center of commerce. It was like going to Washington, D.C. might be today. So the Lord raises up his servant, Jonah, to go preach. He gives him a word of God and says, Get up, Jonah, and go. And you know Jonah's response? But Jonah ran away from the Lord. There it is. What a rebel. God told him to do one thing. And what makes someone a rebel? Doing exactly the opposite of what you've been asked to do. God said, get up and go. And Jonah said, no. I'm going to do the very opposite of what you said. The shadows of rebellion are covering Jonah's heart. Friends, when we see the book of Jonah, it's not just Jonah's heart that acts that way when the Lord speaks. Don't you see some of Jonah in your life? When the Lord speaks to us, there's a shadow of doubt that creeps over in our minds. The devil's so quick to say, do you really have to do what God says? I mean, think about how much better your life would be if you just did what you wanted. Don't let anyone, especially not God, tell you no. We see ourselves running away from the Lord too, just like Jonah headlong into the darkness and shadows of rebellion. The Lord needs us to see just how important it is for us to understand the extent of Jonah's rebellion. He didn't just run away. He did his very best to disobey every single word that the Lord had spoken to him. Jonah headed for Tarshish, he went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish. 
a couple things really stand out in this text. Remember how God told Jonah, get up and go? He was telling Jonah to make a trip across the land to go to the most important city at that time, Nineveh. Well, instead, Jonah goes down to Joppa and he heads for Tarshish. Instead of taking a journey across the land, he gets on a boat. He's willing to pay money just to get away from the word of the Lord. He completely defies everything that God told him to do. We need to understand some geography right now to see just how diametrically opposed Jonah was to obeying the Lord. So this time, if you pull out your message notes, you might want to get out a pen, maybe a crayon or a colored pencil, and make some notes here because I want you to see where it is that Jonah headed off to. The Bible tells us that Jonah's hometown was a place called Gath Hefer. It was really right outside the city of Jerusalem. And instead of taking a trip to Nineveh, which you'll see on the map, a journey significant, several hundred miles for him to get there, walking, instead of going up to Nineveh, climbing up through the mountains, over the plains to get to that city, Jonah goes down to a place called Joppa. He descends from his hometown to the Mediterranean Sea, and he hops on a boat there. He's headed for a place called Tarshish. On the map, it looks like that. 2,500 miles away by boat from where he's currently standing. In his mind, he wanted to do everything possible to get as far away as he could from where God told him to go. To the Israelite, Tarshish literally was the ends of the earth. He made it all the way to Spain. And there's some interesting things about that city that help us to understand what Jonah was thinking. Tarshish was thought of in that day like we might think of Disneyland. There was something ethereal about the place, mystical. It was a place of treasure, of lush forest, a place of commerce. Isaiah talks about the ships, ships that would sail from Tarshish, laden with gold, with incense, and with gems. That's where Jonah wanted to go. Instead of heeding the word of the Lord to go preach to Nineveh, he wants to take some time off and just go to Disneyland. Forget about whatever it is that God wanted him to do and enjoy the pleasures of life. He was diametrically opposed to everything that God said. What does that make him if not a rebel? Friends, do you see Jonah's story in your life? How many times haven't we looked at exactly what God commands us and striven to do exactly the opposite? The Lord says, love me with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And we say, um, I mean, I'll do that, God, but I'm just going to switch out the characters. Instead of loving you, I will just love me. I'm going to put all my effort, all my energy into loving myself because that's what I want. And don't you dare tell me no. When God says, love your neighbor as yourself, we flat out, brazenly, and boldly say, no. I'd rather love myself than anyone else, especially when you show me what my neighbors are like. God, look around. They don't love you as much as I do. You should pour out all your blessings on me. These people are not worthy. They're not deserving of my love. Not at all. Not in any way. God, I'm going to focus my time on me instead of on the people around us. God says, love my word. And we flat out say, no. 
There are so many more things that call my attention, so many more things that demand my time. I just don't have time for your word, God, so sorry, I'm going to have to pass. Not today. That's a no coming from me, God. Can we dig ourselves a deeper hole, friends? When we don't love God, when we don't love our neighbors, when we don't love his word, we are headed headlong into darkness. Headed to the place where it's not just full of shadows. Headed to hell itself. We show every single day that we are rebels and deserving of any, undeserving of anything good from God at all. It's amazing and astounding that he would even consider loving any one of us for how diametrically opposed we are to his word. And yet, we see the grace of God in our lives. God could have ended Jonah's life right there and made this book a whole lot shorter. But instead, he wanted to teach this prophet a lesson. He wanted to teach this people a lesson. He wants you and me to know who he is. Do you remember that name? The Lord? The God of free and faithful grace? The one who's promised that he will never abandon you, not once in your life? He didn't give up on Jonah, and he's not willing to give up on you. He would go into the shadowy darkness of death to bring to light life for you. In the life of Jonah, we see a man who fled from the Lord. Isn't that what we've been doing since the first moment of our lives? trying to run away from God and tell him, no, I don't want you imposing your laws on my life. Wasn't that what Adam and Eve were doing in the Garden of Eden? They were afraid because they were naked, so they fled. They hid. That phrase encapsulates the human behavior when we come before a holy God. We want to tell him no, and we don't want him to tell us no. But in order to help us emerge from the shadows of rebellion, God sent the faithful one, the Lord Jesus. He stuck him to the cross and nailed every one of our sins to him. It was at the cross that he took our rebellious heart and removed it. It's at the cross that he's filled us with his heart so full of faithfulness and love. It's because of the empty tomb that you and I can emerge from those shadows of rebellion and live as children of God. That with joy in our lives now, we can willingly obey what God says. When he tells us, yes, my child, I want you to do this. And when he says, no, my child, not this, that we willingly follow our Lord. It's so easy for us to live in this world as rebels. It's a popular thing, isn't it? If you've ever watched the movie Star Wars, you've learned that being a rebel isn't so bad. We need to turn that on its head. Sin is always wicked in God's eyes. And he has an amazing plan for sinners. It doesn't revolve around us uh, removing sin from our lives, from us leaving sin behind every single day. No, it's a plan that revolves around Christ and the sacrifice that he made. It's a plan that revolves around Christ and an empty tomb outside of Jerusalem where he assures us that the payment that he made for all sins of all times is complete. 
It's a plan that involves leaving darkness behind and living as children of the light. Let's do that today. Let's learn to see the world as God does, to rejoice that he's made us his own children. So that the word no isn't popular unless it's saying no to the kind of things that God says no to. So that the word no isn't unpopular unless it's learning to say yes to the things that God says yes. So that every single day we can live with the confidence that comes from Easter time and always. We are forgiven children of God. Then, as a congregation that's alive in Christ to share life in Christ, let's join together in professing our Easter hope today and always in our living Savior. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. May the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in our risen and living Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's join together now in confessing our faith. We use an ancient song called Te Deum. We praise you, O God. Let's join together in singing our confession. We praise you, O God. We are regular worship, we do offer our offering of thanks and praise to the Lord. If you desire to send an offering of thanks, you are welcome to do so through our website, faithalaska.com, or to send your offering to our church office. Let us continue then with our prayers to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. O God of mercy, hear us now as we unite our voices to pray for your church. God of mercy, keep us from the doubts and fears that cripple us and prevent us from knowing the fullness of your saving peace and gracious presence. Teach us to trust in your word and to believe with all our hearts, minds, bodies, and strength in Jesus Christ, crucified for our sins and raised for our justification. O Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace, bestow upon your church your Holy Spirit and all the gifts that come down from on high. Grant to us faithful pastors who will preach faithfully and give us ears to hear your word proclaimed. Sustain us while apart and bring your scattered church together again quickly. Give us boldness in our witness before the world and courage to speak your name without fear. O Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of power, give courage and strength to those persecuted for the faith and comfort the families of the martyrs. In uncertain times, keep your church from being tossed about by the winds of change. Keep her steadfast in the doctrine of the apostles and the faith once delivered to the saints. Help us to admonish, admonish those who have fallen away and to restore with gentleness those who have wandered from the truth. O Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of might, counsel the nations and their leaders to act wisely in all matters. Bless us with faithful and just leaders who will protect the sanctity of life and defend us against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Make us wise and discerning citizens who use the gift of liberty for noble purpose. O Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, teach us to love one another as you have loved us. Guide us to reveal the love and strength of Christ to our troubled and fearful world. Deliver us from disease and everything else, everything else that would threaten our homes and families. Protect the police, firefighters, disaster relief workers, and medical personnel who attend to us, as well as the places where we live and work. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, Give your aid and relief to all who suffer want or need, to the sick in their afflictions, to those troubled in mind, to those to whom death draws near. Heal and sustain them according to your gracious will. And this morning, especially, O oh Lord, we pray for Terry Joe Hedman's brother, Martin. We thank you for the successful surgery of placing stints, uh, in him that his blood may flow and we pray for your for you to sustain him as he awaits further surgery uh, to improve his health e even more preserve us all in faith to eternal life O oh lord in your mercy hear our prayer god of hope be with those who grieve the loss of a loved one this morning, we especially pray for the family of Pete McIntyre, the son-in-law of Colleen Oldfield. He was taken away from them on Friday evening. O oh Lord, be with his wife Jessica, their children Braden, Cody, and Aiden, and help us all to number our days aright, that we may not be distracted by the things of this world, but we may focus on the one thing needful that is your gospel, 
that in Christ we may be found faithful when he returns in his glory. O Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O blessed God and Lord, hear the prayers of your people and teach us to trust in your will to answer our prayers with all that is needful and beneficial, both for us and for all for whom we pray. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Hear us, O Lord, as we also pray the prayer for grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We conclude our service this morning singing hymn 143, stanza 5. Once again, a very heartfelt good morning to all of you. It is our prayer that Christ's resurrection and the forgiveness that he gives for our rebellion be your peace and joy today. At this time, we would like to share with you uh, a message from our national church, from our synod, uh, the Wells Connection for April. Hi, I'm President Mark Schrader. 43, that's the number of first-year students now enrolled at Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary. It's a good number, the highest total in 12 years. There's great demand for pastors all across our synod, serving in churches like yours and around the world. Ethan Schultz is in his first year at Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary, but he's already a seasoned mission worker, having spent a year in Southeast Asia. Going to Southeast Asia was a very exciting time because you're, you're preaching the gospel firsthand. You're telling people that have never heard about Jesus, and those are always things that you hear about in the classroom, but to finally go and do that was, was an amazing gift. So it's very, very important that you check. The seminary has placed a special emphasis on preparing pastors to serve in a wide range of communities and cultural settings. The seminary's Pastoral Studies Institute, for example, trains pastors who come from non-traditional backgrounds. Through our Pastoral Studies Institute, have opportunity to work with uh, sister church bodies really throughout the world in providing training. Um, and we have so many people that are reaching out to us for training. First, could I ask all of you? Four years of training beyond college takes a significant investment, both for the students and 
for us as a synod. Increasingly, Wells members and congregations are offering special gifts to help these young men reduce or eliminate their debt, so they can focus fully on service to Christ's kingdom. What's the promise in, in 315? The talent that's here, the enthusiasm, the excitement for sharing the gospel. Uh, I, I am so excited for the future as I watch these men train. As always, the students here are deeply rooted in the biblical languages, doctrine, and practice. And there's also a deep desire to serve God's people. I'm going to get to use all the skills I learned here, all the skills I learned at Martin Luther College. I get to put them all together and serve God's people and show people God's love. You've got to go and meet people and, and learn about them and then you can, you can personally tailor and deliver a gospel message to them. And it's always going to be Jesus as their Savior, but that's the beautiful thing about the gospel is that, that sentence, that truth, is applicable in every situation in people's lives. Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary has a deep tie to the past and a strong vision of the future, a vision for service to the Lord and His people at congregations like yours and around the world. While enrollment rates at Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary are up significantly, the numbers are still lower than our peak in the mid-1970s, and there is no shortage of need. Many congregations have vacancies, and many opportunities go unmet. It's a reminder to always be encouraging to young people you know who have the potential for service in full-time gospel ministry. It is a true, wonderful blessing from our God, the training and education that our church body is able to provide for our pastors. Keep them in your prayers, dear brothers and sisters. And also, I would like to echo President Schrader's message to the youth that you consider possibly becoming a pastor yourself, to consider that as a way that you can serve the Lord in full-time ministry, sharing the beautiful gospel that we have uh, with a world that still needs to hear it. Keep that in your prayers as well. And finally, brothers and sisters, a few uh, announcements to remind you that uh, Sunday mornings we continue with our live and interactive Bible studies uh, at 9.07 a.m. every Sunday morning through Zoom. Instructions for attending that service are available in the service insert uh, as well as on our website. And together with that, a note that this week we will also offer an additional Bible study opportunity starting on Wednesday evening at 6.30. The instructions are also through Zoom, so the instructions are the same if you would like to join us live and interactive on Wednesday evening at 6.30. Together with that, our Toddler Time team continues to offer um, activities for toddlers on Wednesday mornings through their Facebook page. And also a note, if you were not aware, uh, during this time of uh, physical distancing, we are also putting the weekly chapel services from our school online. Uh, those are available through the same uh, YouTube channel and Facebook pages if uh, you would like to uh, attend worship uh, virtually uh, through our, for our uh, school chapel. Those are, I believe, the announcements for this week. May the Lord keep you in his care wherever you may be. We look forward to joining once again physically as brothers and sisters, as a family in faith, to celebrate the victory of our Lord. May he be with you this week. Amen. <laughs>